there aren't a lot of artists with works owned by the Whitney Museum of American Art and who also served a dozen years in prison. But that distinction can be claimed by Anthony Papa, who got out of jail almost two decades ago after some real struggles and today is a renowned and successful painter. Right now, he and some fellow artists are getting ready to present a new show titled The Museum of the War on Drugs at the United Nations, no less. And he's an author, too. His latest book is called This Side of Freedom, Life After Clemency. And no, we're not finished. Mr. Papa is also the manager of media and artist relations at the Drug Policy Alliance. Tony Papa, welcome to BK Live. All right, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. So you spent a dozen years behind bars, and now you're working against those drug policies that kept you there for that long. How did that marriage come together? Well, uh, when I, I received clemency uh, from Governor George Pataki in 1994, so when I came out after serving a, a sentence of 12 years in a maximum security prison, Sing Sing, I wanted to save those I left behind. So I started this uh, personal uh, agenda right. to paint uh, images of those in prison as uh, humanistic, mm -hmm. which is, is rarely done. So uh, I went on a rescue mission, bottom line, really? to save mm -hmm. those I left behind. Tony, did you paint before? No, I you discovered my talent in prison. On one day I was sitting in my cell after three years, uh, picked up a mirror, looked in the mirror, saw an individual who was gonna spend the most productive years of life in a cage. And I picked up a canvas and I painted the self-portrait titled 15 to Life. Seven years later, I wound up at the Whitney Museum of American Art. I got a lot of publicity on my case, and that's how I got granted executive clemency. But I discovered my talent in prison. Uh, and it's one night I was smelling uh, it's turpentine, yeah. and I followed the scent uh, to the cell, yeah. and it was another uh, painter, a painter yeah. in the cell painting, and he had portraits that looked like Rembrandt, and mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. So he, he turned around, he came out, and uh, one of the rules in prison I didn't know is that you don't look in somebody's cell. It's a sign of disrespect, and that's high on the level of existence in prison. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to fight with me, so I took, calmed him down. I told him, look, I, I admire your work. Mm -hmm. I think you're great. So then he had like a big head, and he said, oh, have you ever painted before? I said, no. He said, you want to try? I said, yeah. So he gave me some watercolor, some paper, and I went in my cell overnight, painted the worst painting you ever saw, <laughs> but ignited this, 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 this fire, desire to create. And that's how I became a painter. Tony, we're seeing some stills here of some of your work. If you could tell us about some of these. Yeah, this is uh, wall work that you see now was done while I was in prison. And basically, I talked about the experience. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, take a, a view of what a prison experience is about, you can go to my website, mm. 15tolife.com, and see these images I made. And one of the greatest things about my, my discovery of my art in prison is discovering also who I was and how I, where I sat in society. I discovered my political awareness in prison. Mm -hmm. I actually went to prison. I got three degrees when I went to prison. I got a, a master's degree from New York Theological Seminary. And uh, I started creating these images where I feel an artist should, should be a social commentator, mm -hmm. talk about the issues that affect us all. So for, for these paintings that you see now, these are images that I created in prison that talked about the reality that surrounded me. So for me, two ironies come to mind. Number one, that you felt that sense when those bars closed that I'm going to spend the most productive years of my life in Sing Sing. And you also, at the same time, found what could be your life's mission, bringing this art as your commentary politically. And the second is that you guys are opening at the UN about the war on drugs and having all of these images and getting political with a body that doesn't have the best record when it comes to the, the war, war on, on drugs. drugs. Right. Basically, what's going to happen at April 19th to 21 is the show. Mm -hmm. But that week, uh, there's going to be a bunch of stuff going on in the United Nations. Uh, the Global Commission is going to be there. Yeah. And these are former heads of, of, of governments, former presidents, uh, are talking about the global war on drugs. Right. It not, not only affects uh, Americans, it's, it's around the world. Drug users today are stigmatized. 
they're like uh, communists in the McCarthy era. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, people p are thrown away in cages. Yeah. Over a million in the federal government, New York State, 55,000. Uh, 94 percent were black and Latinos in New York State, yeah. very racist laws. So these laws exist. It's, it's still going on. President Obama now is initiating uh, legislation to try to fix a broken criminal justice system, mm -hmm. uh, a mandatory minimum sentencing, crack cocaine disparity. These are all problems and issues that affected uh, 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 the, uh, the United States of America, which actually broken the criminal justice system. Yeah. So we're trying to fix it. My organization I work for, Drug Policy Alliance, is the biggest uh, advocacy organization in the United States, and we, uh, you know, seek to uh, fix laws that are like these laws, mandatory minimum sentencing laws that just uh, are horrible. Yes. Uh, somebody could go to prison for $10 worth of cocaine for 10 years, 15 years. So we're trying to fix those laws. And we're trying to say, you know, if somebody puts some uh, substance in their body, they shouldn't be penalized criminally. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a drug addiction is a medical problem, not a criminal problem. But the way it's being treated is criminally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tony, what can we expect to see at the museum? What? Well, gonna, you're going to have art installations by other artists. Uh, some of my paintings will be there. The painting on display now is my famous painting, 15 to Life, which was at the Whitney Museum, uh, displayed, uh, showing the reality, the, the, the despair of spending uh, t uh, a, a significant time of, of your life yeah. in a maximum security prison. So you're going to see images. There's going to be uh, uh, actually cells built, uh, um, just paintings, and just uh, objects that reflect uh, the reality of the war on drugs at the, at the uh, art uh, exhibit. So leaving Sing Sing, how do you begin to navigate the art world? You well, talked about the, some of the personalities inside, and I can only imagine some of the personalities outside dealing with those. It, it has not been easy. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know what, what I what I do is I show my work uh, all, uh, a lot of spaces, cultural spaces around uh, leading galleries, wherever I could. Uh, my objective is not really to sell my art. Mm -hmm. well, it was nice to sell a piece, but to get the word out about the war on drugs and what it means for people to be in prison uh, uh, for small amounts of drugs and get whacked with uh, tremendous sentences. So my art is, goes along with my advocacy uh, for telling people what the drug war about and who it affects. Right, what it actually does, what it right. actually looks like and humanizes it. Tony, there's also the book coming out, right? right? So it's, it's already available as an e-reader. It comes out next week in print, right. This Side of Freedom, Life After Clemency. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, it's, a, it's another memoir. My first memoir was 15 to Life, How I Painted My Way to Freedom. Uh, a feral House, that was published in 2004, and that was about my prison experience. This book is a book about my 18 years of freedom mm -hmm. and how I've done, what I've done to survive. Because almost 70 percent of those that come out return within three years. So my uh, whole objective is to talk about my experience and to show how I survived outside and was one of the few Great that guys. made it Good. and created, you know, who I am today, Tony Papa, the artist, the author. Well, Tony Papa, the artist, the author, thank you so much for spending some time with us Thanks today. Thanks so much. Bringing your work back. We really Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.